In 2020, an Al Jazeera journalist suspected his iPhone was being targeted with Pegasus spyware. So he turned to Citizen Lab for help. Detailed in their forensics report, Citizen Lab installed a VPN on the phone so that they could log all of the internet traffic with that phone. Soon enough, that phone was targeted. The logs showed an unusually high number of connections with a specific iCloud partition. In the 54 minutes before Pegasus spyware was installed, the iPhone made 228 anomalous connections with the iCloud partition. This represented 88% of the connections with the iCloud partition in the 3,000 hours they logged. The connections to the iCloud resulted in a net download of roughly 2 megabytes of data and a net upload of 1.25 megabytes of data. This download likely contained scripts that commanded the phone to connect to the Pegasus spyware installation server because one minute after the last connection to the iCloud, the phone connected with the Pegasus installation server and downloaded Pegasus spyware. From the logs we can conclude, Apple servers delivered the exploit. Much is still unknown about many of the zero-click exploits that have been used. It is challenging to consistently observe them. Apple as well as other developers do not release many details about the vulnerabilities. Amnesty International conducted multiple forensic analyses of process logs and activity logs of multiple phones with Pegasus infections that came from zero-click exploits that leveraged Apple Music, Apple Photos, and iMessage. Right after connections to Apple servers, they observed various indicators that Pegasus spyware was installed and running. They were unable to conclude if the Apple infrastructure had a vulnerability that was exploited or if Apple's infrastructure functionality was simply used to deliver the exploit to the target phone. These exploits were triggered by simply texting or calling the phone. It didn't matter if the user interacted or not. Zero-click exploits are a game-changer for cybersecurity. Let's first start by analyzing a few zero-click exploits to see how devices can be hacked by simply texting or calling them. Before we analyze the attack surface, what applications are most vulnerable to zero-click exploits, and how the exploits are changing cybersecurity. It is important to note the zero-click exploits can be developed for all types of devices. We'll cover more on that later in the video. In 2016, Citizen Lab and Reuters first identified zero-click exploits that were installing Pegasus spyware. By 2019, zero-click exploits had become the de facto tactic to install the Pegasus spyware on target phones. One of the first zero-click exploits is called Karma. According to ex-operatives that Reuters interviewed, it exploits a vulnerability in iMessage. It worked during several periods in 2016 and 2017. Not much is known about this exploit. It is believed that iOS updates eliminated the exploit. According to Citizen Lab, a more widely used zero-click exploit that leveraged vulnerabilities in iMessage made rounds in 2019 and 2020. It's called Kismet. Kismet was a zero day against at least iOS 13.5.1 and could hack Apple's then latest iPhone 11. The vulnerability that Kismet exploits has never been identified publicly. Apple's blast door neutralized the Kismet exploit. Unlike other apps installed on iPhones, some components of iMessage historically have not been sandboxed from the rest of the iOS operating system. This open format allowed attackers to exploit vulnerabilities in iMessage to gain access to other parts of the operating system. In response to the exploits taking advantage of the vulnerabilities in iMessage, Apple developed Blastdoor. Apple's Blastdoor is basically a sandbox. It opens the data packets sent to iMessage and performs functions related to those packets in an environment isolated from the rest of the iOS operating system. This feature started with iOS 14. Blastdoor eliminated zero-day exploits. In March 2021, Citizen Lab was analyzing the iPhone of a Saudi activist that was infected with Pegasus Fiber. They discovered a zero-day, zero-click exploit against iMessage running on the iOS 14 that has Blastdoor. The zero-click exploit, called Forced Entry, was effective against Apple iOS, macOS, and watchOS devices. Citizen Lab reported it to Apple, who investigated. Apple later described the zero-click exploit as processing a maliciously crafted PDF that may lead to arbitrary code execution. According to the NIST National Vulnerability Database, as well as Citizen Lab, this zero-click exploit works by exploiting an integer overflow vulnerability in Apple's Image Core Graphics Rendering Library. An integer overflow happens when the output of a computing process is too big for the memory or storage allocation, so it overflows into other areas overwriting the data, and then the overflown data gets executed. We believe the overflown data likely commanded the iPhone to connect to the Pegasus installation server. Citizen Lab analyzed the phone's backup files. 
It yielded several files with the .gif extension in the library of SNS attachments. It was determined that 27 of the GIF files were actually Adobe Photoshop files that were texted to the phone. In addition, four different files with the .gif extension that were actually compressed Adobe PDF files were also texted to the phone. Google's Project Zero later concluded that in order for GIFs to endlessly play in a loop, iOS passes the packets to a process outside of the sandbox. It does this before the user views the GIF. Since the compressed packets were actually part of PDF files, the files were then forwarded to the PDF parser on the Core Graphics Library, where the integer overflow vulnerability is. This is how the exploit circumvented the Blastor sandbox. When the compressed file packets were decompressed, they overflowed in the process outside of the sandbox. If this doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. It doesn't make sense to most, which highlights the complexity of zero-click exploits and the level of sophistication required to develop them. Basically, the iPhones were hacked by threat actors texting PDF files disguised as GIFs to their targets. Apple and iOS have not been the only ones with vulnerabilities leveraged by zero-click exploits. According to Citizen Lab, a vulnerability in WhatsApp was exploited that allowed Pegasus operators to install the spyware on roughly 1,400 Android and iOS devices in 2019. In the complaint, WhatsApp filed related to their lawsuit against the exploit creator, NSO Group. It stated that once the malicious calls were made to the target's phone, they injected the malicious code into the memory of the target phone even when the target did not answer the call. When a WhatsApp call is made, a void connection between parties is initiated, and call settings data is transferred before the call starts. Meta, the company that owns WhatsApp, released a statement saying that a buffer overflow vulnerability in the WhatsApp VoIP stack allowed a specially crafted series of real-time transport control protocol packets to be injected into the target phone. Similar to an integer overflow, a buffer overflow happens when a data packet that is being processed is too large for the allocated memory. It overflows into the adjacent memory, overwrites the data there, and is executed. The real-time transport control protocol initiates call settings such as quality of service. The attackers basically snuck malicious code into the data packets for call settings. As you can probably see, zero-click exploits are incredibly complex and require a level of skill that generally only nation-states, mature organizations, and organized crime possess. They are sophisticated exploits like buffer overflows, integer overflows, and data injection that require deep knowledge of the various systems, processes, and coding languages used in the applications they exploit. It is important to note that some zero-click exploits are network-based, which generally don't require as high of a skill level. Network-based exploits can inject scripts and even malware into open ports on devices from the trusted Wi-Fi router or cellular network that the device is connected to. Some nation-states have access to the cellular networks that operate in their country. They can also broadcast rogue Wi-Fi or cellular signals to gain access to devices. Google has a team that hunts for vulnerabilities before hackers can exploit them, called Project Zero. They have found vulnerabilities that could be leveraged for zero-click exploits in applications including Facebook Messenger, Signal, FaceTime, Google Duo, and iMessage. For example, in 2021, Project Zero disclosed a server-side vulnerability they found in Zoom. The vulnerability could have been exploited to take control of the victim's device without any interaction from the victim. As we mentioned earlier, these zero-click exploits are game-changers. With most security breaches, human error is a factor. Hackers have to rely on their targets to make a mistake such as clicking the link on a phishing email, downloading attachments, and so on. With zero-click exploits, hackers do not need to rely on mistakes from their targets, and they are very difficult to detect and defend against. This is why they are growing in popularity. Threat actors can use zero-click exploits to target their victims based off of a unique identifier like their phone number, email address, or username. This allows for both selective or mass targeting to be very effective. Video conferencing apps, social media apps, messaging apps, and file sharing apps are all widely used, have unique public-facing user identifiers, and regularly interact with other users and apps. This makes them likely vectors for zero-click exploits. Software and applications have proliferated across the world. Many have complex infrastructure hosted by both the developer and the user's device. This creates a growing attack surface for zero-click exploits. In addition, software and applications commonly use an open source code, which allows threat actors to sneak vulnerabilities into the source code that they can exploit later. For example, in 2021, 
JFrog researchers found 11 malicious packages in the PyPy repository and 17 malicious packages in the Node.js package manager repository. This also adds to the attack surface. As new vulnerabilities are discovered, many will be used for zero-click exploits to install malware, spyware, ransomware, and exfiltrate data. They seem to follow a similar framework of injecting scripts into an application that then commands the host device to connect with a download server. These zero-click vulnerabilities underline the importance of code review, vulnerability research, and quick patching.